Welcome everyone that's joining us now. Uh, as I'm Tom Price from Calvary Chapel Magazine, and we're in, we're going to talk a little bit with Pastor David Guzik, who is really one of our, our favorite uh, Bible teachers, uh, commentators uh, in, in in our in our Calvary Chapel family, and we're just so glad to be with with him and 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 get a little bit of insight from him. Uh, as most of you know, that David had two church plants in America, first at Oxnard, Calvary Chapel Oxnard, and Calvary Chapel Simi Valley, before uh, Nick Long persuaded you to fly to Germany and run the Bible college there in Siegen, one of my favorite places uh, in Germany for sure. I, I, when I, I, as soon as I get to Siegen, I feel like I'm home. Isn't that what you feel when you arrive back in Siegen, David? Yeah, it's a wonderful congregation. It that, is. Uh, God called Ingalil and I to go there and serve and start the Bible college there and be part of what God was doing there through a really remarkable 10 year season that the Calvary Chapel Bible College Germany was there in Siegen. Yeah. Uh, we look back with a lot of fondness upon those years. Yeah, uh, I was there back in 1999 and I made so many good friends that I still have till today. Yes. When I go back, I feel like it's all home week, you know, um, with, with so many just just wonderful believers there. And it's just a, a, a miracle that was that's a whole nother story how that happened with Nick Long and Sue Long back in those days. Uh, how, what the miracle that God did through those two uh, individuals, but he brought you over. And I know that, and I, I had the privilege of coming over once and documenting for Calvary Chapel Magazine of the mighty work that God was doing through all you there. And I know there is still amazing fruit from that time when that, because a lot of the pastors, they grew in the Lord. They became pastors uh after going attending the bible college so i i know it's a special time for you when, when you go back and you see that you see what god's done you know what what a, what a great thing it's true you know our lives and schedules have all been disrupted by this global pandemic mm -hmm. and for me one of the several disappointments as they've had is that uh, for the past 12 or 13 years we've been getting together every may in Ziegen for a mm -hmm. special conference yes and we've always looked forward to those times tom you've been there at some of those I conferences. Have. I have, yeah. and uh you know we had to we had to cancel the may conference this year which was a disappointment to me disappointment to so many of our friends in germany and in europe uh but you know what the lord knows we don't despair any of these things god knows it's, right. this whole global pandemic caught us by surprise but it didn't catch god by surprise he's still <laughs> on his throne he still is and as david um has a special place in his heart for europe anyway since his wife ingalil is from sweden that's correct sweden and of course my wife is from hungary so both david and i have a special place in our hearts for europe in general and it's always good to go back yes yeah yeah, it sure is. And 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 I know that that was a great time for Inga Lil too, is she poured into the women there in Germany during that time. As you were teaching in, in the college, she, she had her own teaching that was going on with the young women. I know she poured into them during that time. She did it both in the classroom thing through classes that she would teach, but then also Inga Lil has a wonderful just ministry of discipleship and pouring into people just on a very informal basis, you know, working right. together with people in the management of the Bible college and all the practical details. So yeah. that was a great season for the both of us in, yeah. uh, in seeing what God could do through us when we stepped out and tried something new. Right. For those that are just coming on here, I'm Tom Price. I had the privilege of interviewing Pastor David Guzik, one of our all time favorite uh, teacher, pastors, commentators from Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara, who, and now, David, can you explain a little bit, when you came back, you became the senior pastor or lead pastor at Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara. And then as the commentary started really taking off and be, taking more of your time, and plus you were asked to teach at so many places around the world and across America that you really couldn't do all three. It was just too, physically, you. You couldn't do it so you prayed and the lord led you into stepping back to just to being a teaching pastor at santa barbara i believe is that correct that's correct when we came back from germany in 2010 we came to santa barbara and i really had the privilege of being the lead pastor at calvary chapel santa barbara and serving that really blessed wonderful congregation 
Yes. And uh, so that we did that for seven years until really we felt, and, and this was truly, we feel a Holy Spirit guided thing that God led us to step away from that position of being the senior pastor at Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara, and to take on with full time and full focus uh, this work that God has given me to do the Bible commentary. And so that's really been our focus the last three years is the Bible commentary. And of course, as you mentioned, I do get out and uh, minister to other pastors and leaders, especially yeah. different conferences and such like that. But really, uh, we kind of saw that um, we were having the most impact, you could probably say, on the kingdom through uh, what God was doing with the Bible commentary and other online work. We just felt it was a very strategic time to put more of a focus upon that. Yeah. yeah. Now, what, what I'm really grateful for is that uh, I just have a continued ministry and relationship with the really wonderful people at Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara. I'm very grateful for Pastor Tommy Schneider and the work he's doing there and just how there's such a partner and encouragement with me, mm. with the work I'm doing. And I love yeah. to partner in any way that I can with them. That's great. And I believe Tommy Snyder was from Calvary Chapel Vail, Colorado. Is that correct? Well, yes, he was. But before he was at Vail, he was at he got trained and ordained and raised up and started in ministry at Calvary Chapel Santa Barbara under uh, Pastor Ricky Ryan. Right. Then he went to Vail and had a wonderful, uh -huh. wonderful long season of ministry, some twenty years, I think, and then. He came uh -huh. back to his uh, his roots, his hometown, <laughs> and uh, right. the pastor of Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara. Yeah, and as we're talking about EnduringWord.com, I encourage everybody, everyone to really see that as a resource, and it's coming from one of our Calvary Chapel pastors. Uh, I just love the way that you have, you. it's not just your voice, it's Spurgeon, it's Poole, it's some of the great commentators that have long gone on to be with the Lord, but we're hearing their voice on this commentary. You've brought all this together. And the exciting thing for me now is that how I wanted to ask you, I, I know, I, th I think it's been translated into Chinese now, or is that finished or is that still in process? Some years ago, when we saw how it looked like God was using the commentary, just in the huh? English language in which I wrote it in, but um we we saw well you know maybe god would want to use it in some other languages where there aren't as many bible resources available especially free bible resources right. so uh we've had the entire commentary genesis to revelation translated into spanish that's available right. at during word.com mm -hmm. and then also in the last several years we've had a very dedicated focus on getting the new testament commentary translated into uh arabic arabic and into chinese wow uh, the arabic new testament work is finished and we have a dedicated arabic website for that congratulations uh, thank you very much it yeah. felt like a real milestone to do that and, and now sure. we're working on the old testament in arabic wow uh, we we also are near to completion with the new testament commentary in chinese is, is that in mandarin uh, well, actually, um, it's just in what they call the, the written Chinese language. Okay. Uh, and it's in what they call simplified characters. Okay. Apparently, Chinese language can be written in either traditional or simplified characters. Th this is the main written language that's used uh, on the Chinese mainland. Right. Uh, and so we, we wanted to get so something important. that would have the broadest reach possible. Yeah, I, I just so appreciate that into the places in the world that we might not be able to get missionaries in easily and going into the Muslim to, to the Arabic speaking world uh, where Islam is reigns. But there, as we learn all the time that we hear that Jesus is coming, is, is saving people through dreams. But so it's one thing for that to happen, but then how can they be grounded if they can't hear God's word and read God's word? And then probably not coming from a Christian background, it, it's, it really helps to have some of these things explained to them, which, the, which Enduring Word does so well. Absolutely, well, it's just true, every believer you know, young believer, old believer, everybody needs that grounding in God's word. 
And uh, what I do with the, the Bible commentary that I have is I just go through and I just try to explain the Bible verse by verse, phrase by phrase. And, and, and Tom, look, I understand uh, because I, I read a lot of Bible commentaries mm -hmm. and uh, I understand that not every Bible commentator connects with every person. And so if somebody reads my commentary and they don't care for it or just doesn't connect, it doesn't hurt my feelings at all. I, I get that completely. But right. I'm just grateful that there's at least a few out there that uh, pastors, preachers, but just everyday Christians, too, mm -hmm. use it just in their uh, study, their reading of the Bible. Uh, about Within the last month, I got a wonderful email from a gal who sent me a picture of her marked up Bible. And what she said is she said, David, uh, every day for the last six years, I've been going through the Bible uh, with you and with your commentary. And I just finished going through the entire Bible. So she's, wow. she's gonna buy a new Bible and start marking <laughs> it up again and start going through the Bible all over again. That's, oh, that's great. So it is so uh, encouraging. Yeah, for, for so whatever reason, God's given my commentary a connection with, like I say, pastors and Bible teachers and all the rest of it, but then also just everyday Christians who just want to read and understand the Bible. Yeah. And I, I also know that you, because I, I get that myself, that you have a, uh, uh, for pastors, for teaching, you, you have some gui guidance. What, what can you direct people to that, that other pastors that may want to? Well, I, I do have, if you go to EnduringWord.com, you'll see it, you'll probably see it in the sidebar, but I do have a every other week email that I send to pastors and preachers and Bible teachers. And it's just something that's on my heart, just some word of encouragement to those who are serving the Lord or laboring in the word in any way, because I do have, I do have a special heart for those who are in some kind of Christian ministry, Christian service. Uh, I, I think it's a wonderful thing. I mean, not, not for a minute do we think that those who teach or those who lead or those who serve in some way, that, that they're, you know, uh, greater in the kingdom or anything like that. You know, we're not thinking of like a, a two-tier uh, no. Christian world or that. But but there there is something, um, you know, there's a real fellowship, I would say, among those who know what it's like to serve the Lord with all of the blessings and sometimes the burdens that that entails. And so I, I just really feel a kinship to other pastors right. and preachers and people who are serving the Lord in any way. Well, we, you know, of course, we know anybody that is in ministry that's teaching God's word certainly has a target on their back from the enemy and, and they're easily attacked. And so I, I know I've talked to people that they certainly are encouraged by that and they feel that connection with you. And so I know they, they appreciate that. Um, you know, Tom, I think that's one of the reasons why you and I have a friendship is, look, I, you know, I, I know that you are a Bible student. I know that you have opportunity to teach the word as well. Yeah. But at the same time, what you do with Calvary Chapel magazine, I know you that is serving the Lord. You take that and you are serving the Lord. You're serving God and his people in what you do with that. And so, you know, very well, too, uh, as I said before, the many <laughs> blessings and the sometimes yeah. burdens that come from trying to serve the Lord in whatever way he's given us to do it. Yeah, that is the truth. So, uh, David, I, I wanted to mention to everybody here that are just tuning in that I'm Tom Price, the editor of Calvary Chapel Magazine. We've been going for 21 years now, and wow. uh, it's kind of crazy, isn't it? And uh, I had the privilege here of talking to my good friend, Pastor David Guzik, currently at Calvary Chapel Santa Barbara, uh, a teaching pastor there. And everyone knows uh, David from his commentary, EnduringWord.com. If you don't, I encourage you to go to EnduringWord.com. And I'd also encourage you to support this work because I know it takes finances to translate this, to keep this going. And for all the work that all, all you're doing uh, as you've got it translated, um, uh, translating into Arabic, into Chinese, already translated into Spanish, but getting the New Testament close to being finished. And it's like any ministry, it takes resources to do that. So. I, I would just encourage anyone who is using that um, or, or would like to use that to go on and as the Lord leads, to be a supporter, to be a part of what God is going to, uh, the blessings that God has for this ministry to be a partaker, just as our, as uh, King David said, 
uh, you know, to, to be a, to be a part of the blessing, whether you're back uh, guarding the, the goods or you're out no. on the attack one in each of the ways that you're equally uh, blessed. So I, I wanted to change the uh, a little bit and talk about get some feedback from Pastor David here on um, talking about the times that we're in and a biblical response. Uh, I, I'm not sure if we're going to uh, uh, be able to solve all the problems in the world here in the next 15 minutes or so, but just a, a biblical response, David, to how you see all these things playing out uh, and practically for the believer. How, how can they uh, be praying? How can they be uh, be be a part of what what God wants to do through these situations. First, it was the COVID, and now the racial tensions that we are experiencing in, in our country. And, and I, we're all learning in this too. I, I know that I've learned a lot talking with some of our close friends that happen to be African American. Uh, some of the things that I didn't realize that they went through. And uh, so, uh, just David, if you can share here, what, how, how do you see God's uh, God's direction for believers? Well, some of the things that have come to my mind, and, and let me say that there's been a lot for us to think about. There's been a lot for us, to, and I think it's an overused word, but I'll use it anyway. There's been a lot for us to process. Right. And <laughs> what I mean by process is just not that immediate thought or reaction, but something right. as we continue to think, as we continue to learn, we just kind of get get a feeling, okay, Yes, this is what God says in his word. This is how the world is around us. This is how God wants us to think and act in the present age. Yeah. And th there's a lot of thoughts we could bring forth on this, Tom. But let, let me just tell you a few things that I have kind of been relevant to me. But first of all, I've been reminded of the necessity in any time of crisis or turmoil to get back to the very basics of our Christian life, to mm -hmm. really have a focus on Jesus, on the yeah. word of God, on prayer, on our worship to God, on, on just the very basics of the Christian life, because this gives us the wisdom, this gives us the grace we need to, to be God's people in this particular time. So I, I found a very helpful, so you go, okay, let's let's really focus on the basics, number one. Mm -hmm. and number two, I think it's very important for us to come back to pivotal passages like Romans chapter 12. Let me just read the first couple of verses to you. Yeah, I appreciate that. <clears throat> Paul says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So we come to God just with that yielded sense. We are a living sacrifice before God. But then don't miss what he says in verse two. He says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That you wow. may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hmm. I think it's really important for us as believers to realize that we're not to be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. I, I, I like what, I think it was J.B. Phillips. I'm looking over to the side here because I think I got this book <clears throat> up on my shelves right to my <laughs> left here. But I think it's J.B. Phillips in his translation says, uh, don't let the world push you down or press you into its mold. Mm -hmm. That's kind of the idea. That the world has a mold that it wants us to be pressed into. And, and we need to be very careful and say, no, our thinking, our heart, our pursuit of God and our understanding of what's going on in the world and what kind of people we should be, it needs to be founded fundamentally on what God shows us about who he is and about what's important to him as it's revealed to us in God's word. To not be pressed into the world's mold, but to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Wow. And the things that are important to the culture, yeah. sometimes those things are important to God as well. You know, we, we don't want to get in the position of saying that just because something is important to the culture, that it's not important to God or to God's word. No, it, we, we don't. That. 
but mm. we shouldn't embrace things just because it's important to the world or to the culture around us. We should say, no, this is important to God. And I think that's very important for us to do, to sort of have that yeah. continual reset. Yeah. Uh, and, and then the other thing I, I would say, uh, the third thing, so the, the first thing was get back to basics. I think it was, was don't be conformed to the world, resist this effort of the world to conform us into its image. And instead we wanna be conformed to the image of God. And then thirdly, I would say this, <clears throat> just to remember humility. Hmm. Tom, one of the, you know, I don't, I don't have a lifetime Bible verse, whatever, but I'll tell you one passage of scripture that's very important to me and that I think about a lot in my life is a, a verse that's repeated three times in the Bible. It's in Proverbs, it's in James, and it's in First Peter. Although sometimes I forget whether it's in First Peter or Second Peter, <laughs> but it's this line: um, "God resists the proud, but gives mm. grace to the humble." Wow! And we just need to be humble before God. Yeah. Uh, it's easy for us to be too arrogant and just think that we or our side, whatever we define our side to be, we've got all the answers. No, we need to humble ourselves before the Lord and, mm. and really let him speak to our lives, our hearts, our thinking, our actions. Uh, it's always a good time to be humble before the Lord because uh, again, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. So you know, those and, are three things yeah. I've really been thinking about in a very personal way. Yeah, and you're right, to humble ourselves, we think that we humble ourselves. When something like this happens, it's so easy to go to one side or the other or feel like we're justified in, in, in our position. And that's that's not God's heart, is it? It's We, we need to humble ourselves and, and, and so that God can really speak to us about yes. what is going on around us in the arena. Because how are we to be salt and light if we're all, if we're spending our time defending a position rather than being slow to speak, quick to listen? That's right, and and it's um it's really just a manifestation of the love that God wants mm -hmm. us to have, right. uh, not just for those in the family of God. Although I think we have a particular responsibility to love and to show love to people in God's family. Uh, but we also have that responsibility to the whole world. And Tom, I'll say it, even to people that we disagree with. Right. Look, I, I, I see it online or on the news. That there's, there's a lot of people out there doing things that I think are really wrong and I disagree with. But in the name of Jesus, I need to love them too. I, I can't let the world just mm. give me a list of the people that I'm supposed to hate and then hate them. <laughs> right. Because the world will change what that list is. You know, yeah. one generation says the world will say, let's hate these people. Another generation of the world will say, well, let's hate those people. I'm gonna say, no, I, I don't wanna be pressed into the world's mold. In the name of Jesus, I want to have a transformed mind, I want a renewed mm. mind. And, and have that according to God's word. And I want to have the kind of love that God has for humanity. Yeah. Um, you know, speaking to the last uh, week, I spoke to your friend and my friend, Ray Dash. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ray's a great right guy. I Isn't sure he? love Ray. Yeah. Very special. And, and you know, we talked about have some more of the suburban churches having mission fields in the inner city. And he talked about one church that had come up from a number for a number of years from a Calvary Chapel surprise in Arizona mm -hmm. and the impact they had in by in the housing projects. And normally the world would see that these these that's going to clash. Well, yes. Ray said that some of the guys even still talk about how much they enjoyed that team coming up from Arizona and pe people didn't look like them, didn't think like them. But God did a mighty work there. And, and and we just have to be open to what God wants to do. Just just like Peter on the roof, really. He's like, no, God, right. I, I can't, I can't. No. I mean, God had God was saying, Yes, you can. Yeah. You know, Tom, uh, I like how you bring up Peter in the book of Acts and how God had to deal with him. You know, when I think of the historical setting of the earliest Christians, that first century church, 
that was a world that was divided. It was totally. divided between Jew and Gentile. It was divided among race. It was divided among language. It was divided among ethnicity and between male and female. And one of the glorious things that God did in establishing the church through this new covenant community through Jesus Christ is to say, I'm going to bring together this body where all those walls are torn down. Right. And here we are as That's one it. group. And, and right. I'll tell you, it blew the mind of the ancient world. Uh, right. We have writings from uh, ancient Roman observers and critics who would look at the early church and they, they would find it scandalous that a uh, Roman master and a Roman slave would sit together in the same worship service and love right. Jesus. It's unheard and, of. You know what really blew their minds sometimes is sometimes the 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 slave would be a pastor in the church <laughs> and, uh, teaching. And, and, and be teaching. <laughs> But listen, that's how it is in the kingdom right. of God. And yeah. so, yeah, it's we we look at uh, the divided times we live in. And look, let's face it, Tom, it is. It's, it's a time of great division all over our culture, all over our society. And it's good for us to remind us, you know what? Not only has it been this bad in the past and God's been able to do a work in it, I'd say it's been even worse in the past and God's right. been able to work in it. In so we should not that. despair. We should not yeah. despair. Yeah, there, there should be excitement coming out of this. There's no room for racism um, in, in, in the Christian church. Uh, obviously, it's been said that Sunday mornings are some of the most segregated times in the United States of America. And, uh, you know, it, it shouldn't be. Um, you know, we will because in heaven, we're going to be worshiping together. You know, it's like, aren't yeah, we? Don't we love that idea that, we're given that scene in the book of Revelation where yes. there are people from every tribe, every tongue, every nation. And, and what's interesting about that is from the way John describes it there in Revelation, those identities of tribe, uh, language, nation, those things aren't erased in eternity. Um, that's something yeah. that God intends us to keep. Right. Uh, you know, uh, people are going to keep their national or ethnic or whatever you want to describe it identity into heaven but it will be so overwhelmed i think uh with our knowledge of the greater identity of who we have and in who we are in jesus christ yeah wow that's amazing what a great thought that is yeah there's so you know um just to go a little bit farther uh, how what is it like out in santa barbara um well, Tom, uh -huh. I'll be honest, if you're talking about in regard to the global pandemic, uh -huh. of course, it's reached Santa Barbara and it touches our life. But I'll just be very upfront with you. Uh, we've had relatively few cases here mm -hmm. in the Santa Barbara area. And so in some ways, it feels distant to us. Okay. Um, uh, I do know some people. Matter of fact, I just heard the other day that my nephew uh, has mm -hmm. COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Oh. Everyone talks about it. And he's a young man. He's strong. I, I confidence he'll recover just fine. Right. Uh, but um, I, there's nobody I know in our area uh, mm -hmm. who has coronavirus or COVID-19, whatever we're calling it. So it does feel a bit distant from because we've been blessed to be somewhat isolated. But right. of course, it affects our lives with the daily routines of life being changed. And you know, sometimes it can be good to have a reordering of priorities and figuring out, uh, okay, let's wipe the slate clean. Yeah, we, We've been trying to, uh, just like everybody at Calvary Chapel, Santa Barbara, Tom, you know this, because I know you get to talk to a lot of pastors, a lot of people serving the Lord. What a challenging time of ministry oh, this has been. It has been. And I, I've got so much love and respect for my brothers in pastoral ministry who have really worked so hard to do the best they can to minister to uh, their congregation and their community in this needful time. Yeah, it was like that. It was one Sunday we were in, and then after that, some I guess it was that in, back in March, when all of a sudden the curtain just fell and churches were going to be empty. <laughs> and that was the way. And for you know some of the bigger churches, they had an online presence already, but. How many pastors 
and with a few volunteers have done everything they could to get the word out online within a couple of days, basically, you know? That's right. And and sometimes feeling enormous pressure to do it at like this high professional level. Right. Think about how we are, Tom, especially in our Calvary Chapel family. You know, right. it, it's really been put in as we want to do whatever we do, the very best we can do it. I mean, we of do course. It, we want to strive for that. But, you know, look, sometimes you just can think, OK, what's the best I can do? I, maybe I can't match the level of this guy who has this full on studio and a whole team. But I'm just going to do the best I can. And isn't it interesting, Tom, uh, the guys who were just stumbling and bumbling along to try to do a video service the first couple of weeks. I look at so many of the guys, they've gotten pretty good at it. They really, really have. It up. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so that's a great thing to see. Yeah. And, and what's what's even so powerful about this is this all this is going online. This is going into those outer parts of the world. And God is using this because we, 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 we have to reach you know, uh, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the outer parts of the world. Well, maybe we weren't doing such a good job quite yet of reaching some of the harder places of the world. Well, all of a sudden, that's been, because even when I was in South Sudan before this hit, everybody had a cell phone there. Yes. And they were online on their on their smartphone, you know, even in the poorest areas. So we know God's word is pouring into areas that it's probably maybe never been before. And so praise God for the work that he's done and all our brothers uh, that have been teaching, a lot of guys who are um, the Calvary Chapel pastors that have made this work and have sweated. You can see the sweat on their brow when the, <laughs> when the camera yes, you can. turns on. And, and sometimes these are men that are used to preaching to hundreds of people but there was something different about looking at that camera with to an empty congregation that what they were going, wow, this is oh, different. Yeah. A whole new challenge. And, and this <laughs> one way I look at it, Tom, is that this strange global pandemic season has given pastors a whole new toolbox that they can exactly. use of ministry tools. And when this whole thing is over, when it's in the rear view mirror, they're still going to have that toolbox. Yeah. You're still going to have those abilities to minister in a way that goes far beyond the immediate people that they speak to. Wow. So that's going to be something that God is going to use mightily, I believe, not only in this strange season, but beyond it as well. Yeah, uh, we've had pastors send us pictures of them the first couple of days, but Sundays, them teaching to an empty congregation. It's yeah. not a really good picture, but historically it is. You know, <laughs> It's a strange picture, isn't it? It's a very strange picture. You, you would know that with your photographer's eye. You, you'd look <laughs> at the picture and say, well, it's just something doesn't look right in this. Yeah, it's empty. You know. <laughs> There's nobody there, but it's for our time, you know. So yes. what we're going to be punching out. Obviously, we were okay. supposed to go to press on April the 1st with the next issue of Calvary Chapel magazine, obviously we couldn't send 35,000 magazines to empty churches. So we're hoping in the next couple of weeks that the churches will be ready. Uh, yes. And we're gonna just dedicate it to COVID coverage and, yeah. and the race. And there's been so many positive stories uh, of, of churches coming together, you know, of the race relation type of stories. So we're gonna, you know, just have that in and, uh, but it, this has been just a special time in America. And God is doing a mighty work, like you're saying, David. He's, he's preparing, he's prepared pastors and ministries for, for to, 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 to get this under the belt. Like you said, they have another um, a, a tool in, in, in their box, in their toolbox now to reach the world. Just want to mention to everybody, I had, this is Tom Price. Uh, editor of Calvary Chapel Magazine. I had the privilege today of talking with my good friend, Pastor David Guzik, a teaching pastor at Calvary Chapel Santa Barbara. And we all love his um, his, his commentary, EnduringWord.com. Um, pray for him, pray for Ingalil as they're in this new chapter in their life uh, where he's not the senior pastor. He doesn't have a Bible college. Actually, he does. The Bible college right now is the world. Yeah, let's say it's online. It's yeah. online. That's, <laughs> That's right. your new Bible college. And he's reaching He's reaching there. So, uh, uh, Pastor Dave, is there anything in closing that you want to kind of say to our followers or people that will be watching this in times to come here? Well, just God bless you. Thank you for your interest in Calvary Chapel Magazine and the wonderful ministry. 
that God does in it through Pastor or uh, through Tom Price and the whole pastoral team that's behind him and the whole team that works on the magazine. Uh, it's a wonderful thing. And Tom, I'm I'm grateful for our friendship over the world over the years and the way that God uses Calvary Chapel magazine to impact the world. Thanks for all you do. Yeah, praise the Lord. After uh, after uh, we realized that we had to go online too, so God pushed us. Sure. I think we've had 46 since April 10th. We've had 46 uh, new stories. So wow, God has fantastic. pushed us to uh, new content every weekday that we're trying. That's our goal anyway. So we don't meet it every time. But uh, so uh, just tell everybody to follow us on Facebook, Calvary Chapel Magazine, uh, CalvaryMagazine.org for our website. Definitely follow David on EnduringWord.com. Uh, like like him, like his follow him, all the other things we're supposed to say and like and follow. Everybody knows what that is now. Sure. And we'll ask Pastor David to close us in prayer as we uh, end this time together here. Thank you, Tom. Let me pray. Father, we're so grateful for the triumph of Jesus Christ. He triumphs in and through every circumstances. And Lord, even when things seem and are at their worst, the resurrection power of Jesus Christ, the love that not only compelled him to go to the cross, mm. but to endure through and to receive the uh, judgment that we deserved on the cross, to receive that and to bear that in himself. Lord, the love that that displays, the power that that displays, we're grateful that it's alive in the world today. So Lord, we pray that you would help uh, Tom and Calvary Chapel Magazine to continue to uh, present that message to the world and every one of us, Lord, in the way that you've given us to do it. We thank you, God. Keep us rooted, keep us grounded, keep us growing in the grace and knowledge of Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name. Amen. Thanks, thank Tom. You. Thank you. It's been a pleasure, David. I hope Great. to see you in person sometime soon. I, I know. It'll be soon enough. Thanks. Right. <laughs> thank God you. God bless you. Thank God bless you. you.